Welcome back to Kemp Fitness Professional. This is another hybrid circuit tutorial video. This one is brutal, guys. Be warned. So I'm starting off with a front foot elevated split squat. I've got about six inches there on my elevation for the front foot, which is quite a bit. And I'm front loaded in the goblet position. So that actually is going to emphasize more of a load on the anterior chain because I'm putting the center of mass in front of my body instead of at my sides down low by my hips. So this is a little bit more challenging position and or a little bit more quad intensive, if you will. So the key note here is that I'm really focusing on pushing down in that front foot and a little forward lean in the torso is totally fine here. And having that front knee come over the toe is totally fine. As long as you're keeping mindful about the weight distribution on, on that front foot and you're not feeling any knee pain, you're still pushing away with a strong braced torso, then you're okay. Number two, we've got a kettlebell press. I'm on a Swiss ball here because A, in light of being a minimalist and using as little equipment as possible, I just wanted to bring the physio ball over in the corner and be able to do my presses just right over here without having to haul a bench over from the weight room. So I'm just going a traditional chest press or bench press, but I'm using the stability ball, the Swiss ball as my bench. So I'm actually rolling it in between the shoulder blades. I want just my very upper portion of my back on it. And then I'm, it's like a hip thrust. I'm glute bridging all the way up, holding myself firm at the top and then performing my press. I actually really like presses from the Swiss ball because the contour of the ball allows you a greater range of motion than you would if your elbow or shoulder, the top of the humerus were to run into the back of the bench itself and limit your range of motion. Same thing like a floor press that's really limited because your elbow stops at the floor. It's the same idea with that chest press. When you have the Swiss ball, it allows you to open up and come down another three, four, five inches of range of motion, get a much bigger stretch on the pec. And I actually like the feel of using the back muscles to grip the Swiss ball behind me as I come back. It just really helps to activate that upper shoulder girdle, keep the tension tight in that whole area and get a big stretch on the pecs. This here is the high plank with the lateral drag. I'm just finishing up now, but the key note to focus on here if you're performing this exercise is to not let the pelvis rotate. Notice how wide my feet were. If you put your feet narrow, it's gonna be nearly impossible to try to slide a kettlebell underneath you from side to side. The wider your base, the more support you have to resist the rotation in the pelvis that wants to occur when you try to grab that bell on the other side of your center of mass and, and drag it across the body. Um, other things about the front foot elevated split squat. Let's see here. Um, you can also do two dumbbells down at the sides. That's another option. This is again, just a way to load a little bit more onto that front leg. I wouldn't necessarily call it a progression, maybe more of a lateralization. It's just the same thing, but a different position with the load. So, um, I would say it's a little more challenging, but, um, I'm just really trying to overload and emphasize the quads on that. And you'll see here what I'm talking about about the chest press is I want you to notice how much I wrap my upper arms, my humerus bones around the contour of the ball in the bottom position of that chest press. I'm really trying to pull the weights down to me, pull my arms down into the Swiss ball to get a greater stretch on my pec. And then having that symmetry on both sides is really nice because you can feel that end point on either side and keep a really even press. And at the same time, you're getting that little extra glute engagement out of it, hamstring engagement out of it, core stability out of it because you're balancing on the Swiss ball. Back to the high plank with the lateral drag. I have a valve slider here that is on the, the kettlebell is resting on. So it helps uh, reduce the friction of the bell to the floor. So it slides a lot easier. That's what allows me to do this heavier 35 count pound kettlebell. If I were to do that kettlebell on the ground and it was getting resisted by the rubber floor and dragging a lot more, it'd be much, much harder. I'd have to drop the weight down and probably do like a 20, 25 pound kettlebell. So depending on the surface area that you have, if you have a slider or not, or if you have carpet versus rubber floor, then that'll change the intensity of the drag, which will make you have to change the weight. But the key is, as you can see, 
shoulders to pelvis, not really moving at all during the exercise. I want to try to keep them as stable as possible and resisting that rotation. And this one for the high volume, this is my second round through. So I think I'm doing six front foot elevated split squats, six chest press, and then either nine or 11 on that high plank lateral drag. I'll count it next time. But this is third round through coming up. This is the hybrid circuit format. So we are going three sets of this circuit in a row. We rest and record our time. We add one rep to each exercise. We repeat that circuit three times in a row, which is the video you're watching now. And then we rest and record our time again. So each hybrid circuit, we go through two times. The first time is our baseline. We write down the time. The second one is our go lap. We want to really try to beat that go slap time from the previous round. And we're adding that rep to each exercise. So you're getting just a little bit more volume done in ideally the same amount of time. So it's increasing the density of the workload, which is this style of training. This is called density training. So you can get a little bit more of that overview if you want the details from the hybrid workout tutorial video that explains more of the programming details in depth. But this is the third set, second round through this circuit. And I'm looking at somewhere around eight minutes, I think. So I'm resting three to four minutes between each set. So if you look at a three minute rest time and eight minute circuit time, that's two rounds through 16 with two rounds of rest, that's six. That puts me at 22 minutes to get through this from start to finish with the rest included. So if I did a second circuit that took me another 22 minutes, I'd be at 44 minutes. And again, that's the main goal of these hybrid workouts is to get you in, do as many of the most important movement patterns that we can, challenge the system neuromuscular wise by pushing some heavy weight and doing some complex movement skills and also challenge the system metabolically by circuiting it together so that way you get that cardiorespiratory benefit too. So 45 minutes, you get everything you need out of the, the movement patterns to keep you at optimal athletic performance and movement quality, but it doesn't take a ton of time and it's not going to tax you too much for the rest of the day. You just get in, get the work done that you need to get done that will optimize your overall performance and well-being, and then you're on with your day. So that's the point of these workouts is they're programmed intelligently for a 15-minute warm-up, 45 minutes of working out, and in less than an hour, you can have everything done that you need in the day. And one hour out of your 24, you're looking at 2.5% of your day. So it's not a huge commitment to make. You just have to make the commitment. This is the end of the third round, guys. Enjoy this circuit. This one is rough. Be prepared, and good luck.